A murder of crows. Melissa realized she could understand Crow's speech the first time she slept over at her new boyfriend's place. The loud calling woke her up early morning, although being a morning person, it didn't bother her. The discovery that she could follow their conversation didn't alarm her. The crows weren't saying particularly anything interesting after all. Food sparrows, dogs, cats, people, cars. Melissa listened until she got up. Hussein reached out from under the duvet. Where are you going, baby? He mumbled. Oh, just to make coffee. She wasn't sleepy anymore and stayed in the living room for over an hour playing on her phone before returning to the bedroom. Hussein was awake when she returned, but no longer affectionate. He grunted about her texting God knows who. She glanced at his sulky face. I just didn't want to wake you, sweetheart, she said, trying to cajole him back to good humor. She didn't tell him or anybody else about the crows. Like most gifted people outside of fairy tales, she had the sense to keep her knowledge to herself, especially since this particular gift didn't seem very useful. What was the point of understanding what a bunch of crows were going on about? She felt irritated at the universe. What kind of stupid gift was this? Couldn't her gift have made her boyfriend love her more? Or understand his moods, his alternate bursts of affection with almost, well, hatred? What was the point of understanding crows when she, more and more, couldn't understand the person she loved most? For it was becoming clear that she had problems greater than crows. Her mom tried to suggest that she break up with him. Melissa was upset, but when she found herself again receiving the silent treatment, only to be brought to an end by a storm of his anger, she thought maybe the time had come to call it quits. They went to bed, still sulking, at some point, he got up and, despite her pleading, left the apartment. She sobbed herself to sleep. She was woken by an extra loud cawing, as if the crow was in the room. It took her a moment to understand. He's going to kill you. The crow was right outside the window. She walked to the window. It opened its beak. He's going to kill you, it repeated. Another crow called from further away. He's coming back. You need to leave. Now, leave. The crow at the window cocked its head at her. You heard that. Leave. He's parking. A huge flock of crows rose out of nowhere, turning the sky black. Their cawing was deafening. Through the back door. They're distracting him, but not for long. Melissa couldn't hesitate anymore. Grasping her phone, she slipped out. The crow swirled and protected her. The early morning streets were empty. She ran as fast and far as she could. And then stopped, gasping for breath, and called her mom.